plummeted down through that weird sky towards a great turbulent ocean that roared and swelled, a ferocious sea that offered no hope of survival. I thought of home and wept, unaware that in an instant my fortunes would be changed by an event so bizarre I almost hesitate to tell you. And it happened like this. A giant whale? It was huge, General. You were swallowed by a giant whale. Yes, General. You look remarkably well for a man who was swallowed by a whale. I am blessed with a strong constitution, General. And I assume you are now going to tell me how you managed to escape from the belly of this giant whale. Naturally, General. And I must say, it really was a fascinating glimpse into the interior life of one of our world's most magnificent beasts. I consider myself a wiser man after this experience. <laughs> a lecture on the subject to Moscow University Zoological Society, if you like. I only want to help. Hmm. The Moscow University Zoological Society has, I suspect, better things to do than listen to the ramblings of a man who claims he was swallowed by a whale. That is a shame, General. People can be so closed-minded. I, on the other hand, have little choice but to hear you out. For your own sake, Ivan. That is a shame, General. People can be so closed-minded. I, on the other hand, have little choice but to hear you out. For your own sake, Ivan Ivanovich, I must urge you to be brief. Absolutely, General. I will tell you directly of my miraculous escape from the belly of the whale. You simply won't believe what happened next. That is becoming a dangerously overused phrase. And so I found myself deep within the whale's organs. A strangely beautiful place. A sort of fleshy wonderland. A glade of polyps and globules. A landscape as awe-inspiring in its way as the forests and mountains of Altai. Oh, my home general that I yearned and longed for and only hoped, as I hope now, that I might one day see again. I think we're all wrong for home at this point. Oh, with warm slippers, a mug of steaming spitzin, and a roaring fire. Not far from home, trapped inside a monstrous fish with only the strange and evil-looking worms that infested its gut for company. With only one's dedication to one's country and mission to keep one from falling into despair. But no, General, I could not. I had to escape, to find little Orpheus and my way back to the surface, and home.
worms, you say, living inside the way. Oh, they were horrid things, those worms, General. And most unwelcome, I would say. Parasites. Just how rampant their infestation was, nor of the tremendous sizes they could grow to. At that point, my thoughts were only of escape. And I had a plan. Yes, I'm sure you did. your Nivirayatni whale sick. Wherever they attached themselves, the flesh began to turn gray and die. It was a truly distressing sight. And I resolved myself to assist the whale by removing the leeches wherever I could find them during my escape. Simple plan, General. I would climb up through the whale's throat into its mouth, then wait until it opened it to feed and swim out. Ah, yes. Brilliant, Ivan Ivanovich. Only one or two minor flaws with it. For example, did it not occur to you that the whale would likely be deep underwater when it ate? Very brave, General. But I am a strong swimmer. As a child, my parents would take us to holiday near Irkutsk where we took constitutionals in the waters of Lake Baikal. In fact, my mother often called me her Malinki Marskoi Kotik. giant worm for a giant whale. 
Huh? At the risk of repeating myself, it was huge, General. Hmm. The Moscow University Zoological Society may be interested after all. Let us take a moment, Ivan Ivanovich. Your ridiculous plan to escape through the mouth of the whale failing, you would now have me believe you had embarked on some misguided crusade to free it of the worm infestation. To what end, exactly? When one suffers, we all suffer, General. Your ideological commitment is admirable, comrade, but, but... I concluded that if I could find the root of the infestation and neutralize it, the whale could mount a spirited counterattack against the worms. And then, victorious, the whale would surface to expel the remaining poisonous muck and slime from its body. And at that point, I could escape through the nearest convenient orifice. In this case, most likely the blowhole. That is the most revolting thing I've ever heard. General, we are Russians. We have withstood the sheer force of nature and history and emerged triumphant. An expedition through the nasal sphincter of a gargantuan whale is nothing to us. I suppose you would have me believe that the whale was grateful to you. <laughs> well, General, that would be presumptuous. I doubt it was even aware of my presence. But I had more immediate problems. For if the whale might have been relieved by my actions, the worms were enraged. Worms do furious. Worms incandescent. Do not feel violently indignant. Emotions. Demented, General. Deranged. Enough! Where is little Orpheus? Where is my boy? I'm 
unless you are trying to dust the whale soul that as well. No, it did not, General. That would be absurd. No, Ivan Ivanovich, you are absurd. Your story is absurd. This whole ridiculous fairy tale is absurd. Yet foolhardy hero escape the furious worm. Will he be doomed to spend his days trapped in the innards of a bad-tempered cetacean? Where is the whale swimming to in such a rush? And what will it do when it gets there? Is the general about to lose his temper and order the cosmonaut shot? All of these questions and more must surely be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Obvious!